All right, welcome back. Now, as you can see, I've implemented my wires in here. Um, on this one, we're going to show you how we separate these wires off. I'm also going to do one more demonstration of how I put these wires on here so you have a little bit more uh, examples set for you. Again, I'm choosing primarily the high points uh, on here uh, just to play it safe. You can choose these secondary low points, but I kind of keep them there so that I can have some negative space uh, that will uh, keep it from looking too overly messy. But I'm going to do one more demonstration of uh, implementing wires with one more piece here. And for that, I'm going to use, uh, again, this uh, brush, this uh, insert Y, that's IY and uh, it's insert cylinder brush. You press the B key and uh, it should be right there. And uh, just redraw it again. So, and I'm just going to again click off here to clear that curve, change my brush radius and click a second curve. That's going to have just a little bit of a difference in variance uh, sizes uh, so that uh, we have something that looks a little bit different uh, throughout and then again as you see I'm just kind of uh, readjusting like you see there. Now uh, remember it is important to uh, come to the conclusion that when you're doing all of these that uh, first things first you need to go through to your stroke menu make sure you have bend and snap turned on especially if you're switching through to different curves if you find yourself just drawing a curve and it sinks all the way through and it's not your depth it tends to nine out of ten nine out of ten times be because snap is turned off I'm gonna hit brush key again one more time and uh, this time we did curve multi tube I'm just gonna work with curve tube this time uh, on here. This is curve multi-tube. Just go through curve tube. With curve tube, let me clear this curve off by clicking off. I always draw in a thin layer. Uh, it's nice because when you draw a curve uh, two in, you know, it, I'll give you an example, it's a little bit, it has a few more polygons on there and it doesn't have that hexagon look, but in any event, I think it sells the best as a small wire add-in, like a secondary detail turn-in uh, for you. So uh, let's go ahead and make it a little bit thinner there. Kind of like that. So, and again, if you see it slipping underneath like that, let's just go ahead and hit undo. And then let's check our brush, or I'm sorry, let's check our stroke, and we'll see snap is turned off. Let's turn snap back on there so we can see it again. And voila, we should have a little bit more of a snap to the surface that is more readable, like so. All right, so now that we have our tubes all put in there, feel free to quick save out or save your file. And I'm going to clear the brush. And what I want to do is I want to set, separate this plate palette from all the wire palettes. So we can do this one of two ways. There are three poly groups on here. So we can just isolate, select, uh, marquee, drag, isolate, select the, uh, uh, the uh, set next poly group, and control shift, left click, and isolate, select, and then marquee, mask out and then simply just do a split. Make sure that when you do this that, yep, that's right, okay. So let's just go ahead and do split mask. And that will turn off the visibility. Now we'll have our wires above typically uh, on our subtool, so we're gonna want to move that below. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through the uh, arrow down key here just below the subtool list so it's below and we want to make sure our live boolean mode is turned on and it is just do that or go to render render booleans and live booleans so from this point on let's see if we can go ahead and convert uh, our wire pieces here into some subtools and take a look at them now, as we see we're cutting into half the pieces, and what you want to look for is readable pieces on all of this. 
Uh, it looks like everything is going through correctly. Uh, if you feel the need to adjust anything, again, this is why I like booleans more than alphas because you can just hit the move move key, or I should say brush, move, and topology, not the regular move because that's just gonna because if we use brush move topology, that's going to move the individual wire itself and not the entire wires that it's bunched in with. And we can just kind of do our uh, rework and cutting in and readjusting from this vantage point without having to interfere with all these other brushes that we see here. And that's kind of a, an advantageous uh, piece uh, for us. And I'm just kind of moving the wires so they go outside uh, the plates so that uh, when you see it from the other side, it looks like it's slinking in. All right, so now that we got that, once we get that taken care of and we clean up all our pieces like so, uh, the next part that we're going to do is, is we're going to t uh, create a Boolean operation off of this by going through Boolean. For, well, I should first say we're going to go through and do click on the actual subtool uh, that we duplicated and then we're going to hit Boolean and then make Boolean mesh and keep your fingers crossed that you don't get any sort of uh, error issues. If you do, then I would say uh, turn, go to dynam Geometry, Dynamesh, Project High, and uh, remesh the piece. Seems to be going through and cleaning through just fine. And, uh, huh, we didn't get any errors. I always like that. Most of the time when I do complex Boolean operations, ZBrush uh, likes to fight me. But uh, we did pretty good on that, so let's go ahead and append our new constructed Boolean piece in. And let's turn everything off and take a look at our Boolean piece. And we have now a new little Boolean piece. Now this is done through wires. I'm going to give you a Boolean uh, that has a little bit of uh, different uh, patterns like cylindrical uh, components just to get your mind thinking outside and inspire you uh, down the road for the helmet. Uh, I'm sorry, not the helmet, but the side temple pieces coming up towards the end of the course. So uh, keep in mind for that. Uh, so let's go ahead and now finally let's put this Boolean to the test. I'm going to go ahead and go to Subtools and hit append and I'm going to append a sphere onto here and then I'm going to take this boolean and left click drag so it's below uh, the piece and then like we did at the very beginning of this section I'm going to try it out by rotating it around scaling it down go to matchmaker BMM or B matchmaker brush and then turning my transparency on. I'm going to go back a little bit. This Boolean needs to be smoothed out or it's going to look choppy here. So I'm going to give uh, the sphere a couple of uh, piece uh, divisions so that when we do a matchmaker brush, it's a little bit more smoother. And then now let's try to test run our Boolean and see if it comes out clean. As you can see, we do have a piece. Now the final test is, is doing your uh, cuts on here. So I what I would do is, is do a control shift, uh, do some uh, trim curve cuts, uh, like, uh, whoops, that uh, it was a, um, <laughs> it was set to a rectangle. I want to change back my curve. And uh, just feel free to do some cuts that look like that. 
and then click on the sub tool that is your boolean piece right here and do an append or I'm sorry not do an append do a make boolean operation test like so And the Boolean operation has succeeded with several warnings. I get that very often when I do these, so uh, don't get too uh, boggled down by it. But let's go ahead and just append that piece up and look at what we got. And that's how you, and it looks like we got a workable Boolean uh, through there. Now, if you uh, get a failed test for whatever reason uh, with your Boolean, I'm going to suggest this uh, first off uh, actually go through uh, the mesh and it's going to perhaps drive up your uh, poly count a little but I would go into geometry and uh, turn on projection and then uh, go to start off with about anywhere from 512 to 1024 and do a dyna mesh and if you're getting really and that should uh, clean up your boolean if now, I'm saying this if your Boolean fails, okay? So after you test your Boolean, if the Boolean operation fails, go to your Boolean, go to Geometry, go to DynaMesh, go to Project, start off with 512, turn Project on, turn DynaMesh on. If it, does, if it looks too low res, then Z back, Go back, undo, and start to 1024, and then re-dynamesh, make sure projection's turned on, and uh, just keep going until you have a fairly high enough resolution. That usually does clean up the Boolean in the process. So that was how uh, we create a customized Boolean. I hope you like that. I'll go ahead and make sure that, like I said, you have uh, a customized Boolean that you should be able to download uh, in this section for you to use. And I believe later on I'm going to supply you a second customized Boolean as well. So uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, get through this. And in the next section we're just going to put this customized Boolean to the test. So stay tuned.